Hey everyone, so this was kind of an unplanned video today, but that's all right. Uh, we get to talk about some negative news that almost is a positive, although right now for us Nintendo fans, there's still some mystery and some wonderment around this announcement, uh, but that's because ultimately it's going to end up being a better show than it would have been otherwise. What are we talking about? Well, it has been announced today by the ESA and other, you know, it basically came out from other people inside the industry. And then eventually the ESA confirmed that E3 2022 has been canceled. Um, that means the digital event, they did cancel the physical event earlier. Now the digital event is canceled as well. And you might go, but Nate, how is this a good news? How is anything positive coming out of canceling one of the longest ongoing events in video game history? And I have some news for you on that. Uh, and why we should actually be more excited now that this is canceled. And yes, my summer E3 extravaganza show is still happening. It just obviously won't use E3 branding. We'll talk about that in a moment after I remind you that, hey, if this is the first time that you've ever seen one of my videos, I would appreciate if you would subscribe to the channel. This also happens to be the last day you can enter one of our giveaways. Uh, you have to be subscribed to win. We are giving away an Xbox Series X, a PlayStation 5, or a Switch OLED. You just have to add out the ping comment uh, or, or the description and click on that gleam.io link. I wish everyone luck. We'll be announcing it tomorrow night on a live stream who wins, although you don't have to be at that stream, you know, in person to win or anything. Now, let's get into the actual news by first showing you the original report that came from IGN. So, uh, IGN says E3 2022 digital and physical has officially been canceled. The ESA has confirmed the cancellation. After previously canceling its in-person E3 2022 event, the ESA has now informed its partners that there will be no digital event equivalent this year either, meaning E3 2022 has been fully canceled. The news broke via a tweet from Razor PR lead Will Powers, who said that an email had been sent out announcing the cancellation of the digital E3 event. IGN has independently verified the contents of the email as well. The ESA had initially planned for an in-person E3 event this year after having no event in 2020 due to COVID-19 and a digital one only in 2021. However, this was canceled in January, with the ESA at the time unable to make a public statement on whether or not there would be a digital equivalent. According to sources speaking to IGN at the time, discussions around E3 have been fraught throughout the year, with third parties normally involved in finding the ESA's ongoing silence regarding their plans frustrating so this is key because obviously the esa needs third-party companies to cooperate so they can you know actually show games at the event sources connected to the event tell ign that discussions about a possible digital event equivalent have been ongoing ever since so again we talked about how there was email sent out by the esa you know about a month or so ago where they were reaching out to people so they were trying to make this event happen but obviously did not you know, get the feedback they hoped, but without strong momentum to drive them. Instead, the ESA seems to be making plans to regroup for a larger comeback in 2023. That's supposedly their plans. Um, good luck because what's happening instead is uh, <laughs> might make, if they can't do an in-person event, um, it, it might make E3 gone. We'll talk about that. Uh, update has the ESA has shared an official statement with IGN confirming E3 2022's cancellation and announcing that E3 will return in 2023 with a reinvigorated showcase. Okay. I mean, if it's an in-person event, I'll give them that. Um, because still there's nothing to replace that in-person event, but, uh, we will devote all of our energy and resources to delivering a revitalized physical and digital E3 experience next summer, whether enjoyed from the show floor or your favorite devices, the 2023 showcase will bring the community media and industry back together in an all new format and interactive experience. We look forward to presenting E3 to fans around the world and live from Los Angeles in 2023. The ESA adds that the 2022 showcase has been canceled so the organization can focus its resources on the 2023 show now obviously um a lot of that's fluff at the end they canceled the 2022 show because they didn't have enough support to do a 2022 show and i could actually argue they didn't have enough support to do a show last year either if you guys remember the e3 2021 show last year they for some reason thought they had enough content to do a four-day event with eight to ten hour days where there was really only four presentations in total that showed games that took up less <clears throat> than two hours and yet they thought they had four days worth of stuff and i was initially excited for what the prospect of an e3 digital event could be because i figured nintendo had shown the esa the way what did i mean by that 
Well, Nintendo, during E3 physical events in the past, would do the Nintendo Treehouse for eight hours a day for three straight days, showing how to properly do this. What do you do? You have your initial kickoff event showing games from a certain company. Then you have developer interviews. You have people playing the games. Like, that's what I thought the ESA could have done. That's what E3 should have been. And unfortunately, that's not what actually happened. In fact, one of the most memorable events is, you know, things like Gearbox showing off a movie and then... Um, Hey, uh, let's uh, let, let, let's waste 40 minutes talking about Verizon 5G and how it's better for gaming without actually showing any games and how it actually makes gaming better. Clearly just a massive ad spot. And uh, yeah, that's not that good. No one wants to see that kind of thing. And obviously at the end, even though Microsoft, I thought, did a really good job, I thought Nintendo killed it. It didn't really matter because the overall show taste left of my mouth was really poor to the point that I chucked a bottle and... To basically told the ESA to F off. Um, so whether, you know, if some reason, if they have an in-person event in 2023 and I can't get into the show, um, you know, I wouldn't blame the ESA because I did not have kind words for them last year because they put on what I still view to this day, a shit show. So it wasn't good anyways. Now, that doesn't mean we don't have anything to look forward to this summer. So let's talk about what's happening this summer. And we're going to actually look at my Twitter account for this uh, because I have all the stuff here. So I mentioned E3 is canceled, but our show is not. As we actually announced a while ago, we have Summer Game Fest to cover, and all of our plans will be built around that show. The question now is, when is Nintendo going to drop the next Direct? You know, let the rumors fly. All right. Uh, next up, I, I retweeted this one by Jeff Keighley saying, excited to share that Summer Game Fest will return this June with a slate of events. We'll be producing another kickoff live show with announcements, news, and first looks. Much more to share in the coming weeks along with some very cool new elements for 2022. And obviously, this is going to be really cool. We should probably know the dates here at some point in April so we can actually plan our event around their event. So it's going to be really, really cool. Um, and then up here, I actually decided I wanted to show people what is happening with Summer Game Fest basically being what E3 never could have dreamed of? And that is looking at the partners that are going to be showing games at this event. So you've Koch Media, Mediatonic, MiHoYo, Bandai Namco, Netflix, which, yes, Netflix does have a gaming division, uh, uh, Cyanix, uh, we have Raw Fury, Riot Games, Saber Interactive, Sega, PlayStation's going to be there, Prime Gaming, Square Enix, Steam, Tencent Games, the Tribeca Festival, Ubisoft, Warner Bros, Wizards of the Coast, Xbox, okay? But we're not done. 2K, Activision, Amazon Games, Anna Peruna, Blizzard Entertainment, Capcom, Devolver Digital, which had an amazing show there last year, Dot Emu, EA is going to be there as well, Epic Games, Finji, Frontier, Gearbox, Hi Res Studios, Inner Sloth, um, and I, for some reason I can't see the rest. Let um, me scroll down here. No, it's, it's not showing. But anyways, the point is that it's got pretty much everybody. The only notable omission from this list is Nintendo. Uh, remember that Sony left E3 years ago. EA left E3 years ago. And yet they're able to get Sony, EA, Sega, Ubisoft, 2K, Activision Blizzard, Microsoft, Epic Games, everyone back together in one show the way E3 used to be. That is what's awesome here is that Jeff Keighley, this man, the myth, the legend himself, was able to bring all these companies back together. Again, the only missing piece at the moment is Nintendo, and that could still be in the works, still be in the negotiation stage. Uh, it's possible because Nintendo has supported the Game Awards that Jeff Keighley runs every year. Obviously, Nintendo's been a big supporter of E3, but now with E3 officially canceled, and they likely got the email as well, uh, who knows You know what conversations are happening between Jeff Keighley and Nintendo to hopefully get them on board as well, uh, because this is basically replacing E3. Um, Jeff Grubb put out there the vibe check that he was getting, and he's a, an industry insider and a journalist, said, I was actually getting that everyone is going with Keeley instead because he's actually competent. And this brings up criticisms that Jeff Keeley had of E3 years ago before he decided he was no longer going to support the event and stop attending, uh, where he basically said he doesn't like what, what E3 is doing, he doesn't like what the ESA is doing, he doesn't think the ESA understands gamers and game publishers, and as we saw with last year's digital event, the ESA clearly has no idea what they were doing. They cared more about 
companies like Razer and Verizon buying ad space than they actually cared about catering a show to gamers. Uh, and notably, last year's Summer Game Fest, the second one that's ever existed, was actually pretty good. It was much better organized, and it felt more like an E3 event. They even had press conferences from companies like Devolver Digital, which is, hey, that was E3's thing. Now they get it. What? That's crazy. So I also mentioned that he got Sony back in the fold with Microsoft, and obviously I didn't mention it in here, EA as well, so there's no EA play this year, because hey, they're going to be at Summer Game Fest, and then obviously when the news broke, Jeff Keighley just put out a winky face, because um, it's pretty obvious at this point that Jeff Keighley actually is the reason E3 is not happening this year, because the ESA reached out to try to get companies to commit, and it's just Jeff Keighley is a more likable person that has a better direction that obviously these companies enjoy and i mentioned you know jeff Keeley actually cares about putting on a show about games and that's what's important is no matter how much you can criticize jeff Keeley, you might not like the way he presents things you might not like the format at which he organizes his shows it is undeniable that he actually cares about video games and showing video games and remember for all of the hullabaloo about the Game Awards, what's the, one of the number one criticisms? Too much focus on game reveals, not enough focus on the awards. Well, guess what? That doesn't matter for a show like this because the focus is the games and the game reveals and the trailers. Jeff Keighley gets to do E3 right. And that is exciting because he already was out doing E3 just last year. If you, if you actually sat there and eliminated your bias for wanting to see Nintendo's Direct, and you go, which show was better, Summer Game Fest or E3? It's not even close. Summer Game Fest destroyed E3, and you know what? The companies that chose to participate in E3 saw that. They saw that Verizon 5G segment. They saw those wasted hours with panelists not even talking about video games. Just, let's get a bunch of these random uh, influencers together and not even talk about games. Let's talk about social issues. Let's talk about politics. Let's not actually mention that this is a video game show and it's the only reason anyone is watching. It was insane. And yet... Summer Game Fest was nothing but games the entire time. Heck, they had developer interviews. They had developers rocking gameplay. They were doing what the ESA should have been doing. So, sure, E3 might come back in 2023. And right now, Jeff Keighley doesn't have plans to replace the in-person event that E3 was. And it's possible that Summer Game Fest becomes the new kickoff event for E3 in person, maybe. That would also require the ESA and Jeff Keighley to actually come together, which I think right now the ESA should basically be in um, in his DMs, in his inbox, making phone calls to Jeff Keighley and being like, hey, you were right this whole time. We're really, really sorry. Um, hey, how about next year you guys handle like all the press conferences and all the kickoff into the live event, and then you tell us what we need to do in our live event to actually make it better. Let's work together. Let's not separate the industry. Of course, that would also require the ESA to eat some of its own pride and admit that they don't know what they're doing and they need Jeff Keighley's help. Um, and again, Jeff Keighley would get to keep his show and just use his show as the kickoff for the E3 in-person event, and it actually could be quite brilliant. Of course, I don't expect the ESA to actually do this. I expect the ESA to say, screw you. We are the ESRB. We are going to run our own show. We're back in person, baby. And that's what's going to matter the most. And honestly, if, if Jeff Keighley gets all the game announcements and all you have are demos, and then you don't let these companies work together with Jeff Keighley with the announcements and the demos, um, that's going to be a problem. So, <laughs> Yeah, we'll see what happens there. Um, I, I could, I, I basically am sort of predicting E3 being canceled next year as well. Not just because the pandemic might still be going on. Even if it's not, it doesn't really matter. I don't think the ESA has enough clout at the moment uh, to pull off an event without support from Jeff Keighley, who clearly these companies believe in more than them. So, um, except Nintendo. Of course, Nintendo still could be announced as a partner, still could join the fray. Nintendo does like to be there at bigger industry events like this, like the Game Awards, like E3 in the past. So even though Nintendo's not on that partner list yet, Nintendo might have already committed to E3. And now that E3's been canceled, Nintendo can obviously shift their plans. But um, yeah, this is going to be a really, really good event. I can't wait. Now, speaking of what we're doing, last year we did the E3 extravaganza. This year we're obviously making a hard shift to covering Summer Game Fest, which because Summer Game Fest was so good last year, we already were going to include Summer Game Fest. So all that really happened is instead of us having 
between a week-long event like was going to happen with, e with, with E3 and uh, the Game Awards going back-to-back, -back, we actually get to focus on Summer Game Fest. And I'm re really excited about that because... Summer Game Fest is so much better. I expect Jeff Keighley to make it probably an extra day long. He's got so many more game companies partnering with him. Probably lots more game showcases, more developer interviews, more gaming music. This is going to end up being a phenomenal stream. And what's really cool is Jeff Keighley likes working with content creators like me. He makes shows extremely streamer friendly. He has an entirely separate version that prevents copyright strikes because he cares about content creators and realizes the role we can play in helping push these events. So I'm honestly just really, really looking forward to what's gonna happen and what this event is going to be. I am, I'm so stoked um, that this is actually, you know what, you might view this as a negative. I actually think it's a positive. It is a negative in that this might be the end of the E3 era, and a lot of us have a lot of really fond E3 moments. E3 2006 will always forever stand out to me from that Twilight Princess announcement to the live crowd. Uh, and you guys all have your favorite E3 moments, I'm sure, as well. But hey, you know what? When it comes to just digital-only events, I trust Jeff Keighley a hell of a lot more than I trust anything happening with the ESA. So uh, we're still going to do our live event built around that. Still have all of our giveaways, still have our crazy competitions and the death wheel and everything in between. It's just now going to be built around what I feel is going to be a better event. And I'm probably not going to end the event by saying F you, Jeff Keighley, because um, last year he made it all about the games. So if he just keeps making it all about the games, well, what the hell can I be disappointed in? Even if the games are games I'm not into doesn't really matter, at least the show's about video games, and that's what we're talking about. And he brought Sony, EA, and Microsoft all together. He gets Nintendo in the fold. I mean, come on, that's the trifecta of, I mean, Valve is there. So you got the Steam Deck there, and PC represented from Valve side. You have you know, Microsoft there with the Xbox and Game Pass. You have, obviously, the PS Plus and PlayStation stuff there with Sony. You get Nintendo there, and it's time, baby. So, anyways, I am Nathaniel Rubble Jans from Nintendo Prime. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.